So, when are we going to see Justice League? Eh, I thought we'd catch a 10 o'clock showing. Wait, are you telling me it's out already? Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And here we are, just on the cusp of the Justice League release. And I'm pretty sure the Justice League flash effect has been requested a few times. That's a huge bitch! There's really only one thing to say about that. My god. That's right, I brought him back. So, in order to complete this effect, you need to head to filmlearning.com slash downloads Download the Justice League effects pack, which contains our lightning assets, our flare assets, and this very, very handy animation guide, which will help us step through the processes of adding all those different little parts that make up the Justice League flash effect. Now guys, fair warning, in the pack there are no spark assets. I'm actually using ones from actionvfx.com because, you know, I got the hookup. But feel free to use any spark assets you find online. I just wanted to work with the best. You also need to shoot your actor standing as still as possible because that's just how this one works. And on top of that, you need to shoot a background plate with them nowhere near it. Now guys, we are just covering the basic flash exit from Justice League trailer, I don't know, two or three. Because honestly guys, outside of a few clips, we really haven't seen how this flash effect actually works from shot to shot. So we're just gonna dip our metaphorical toes in the water today, and maybe after the movie comes out, we can tackle something a bit more advanced. But for now, let's get to work. Hey there guys, here we are in After Effects, and before we get into the tutorial, I'll just let you know what I've done here in the project window. I've imported my lightning animation, my flares, and I've also imported my spark assets courtesy of Action VFX, as well as my actor footage and my background plate. Now, let's head over to the comp and see what I've got set up. You can see I have two clips here. The bottom one here is my clean plate without me in the footage at all, only Doug. And of course, my top plate is me in the frame, and you can see what I've done is trim the top layer to stop here, a little before the end of the comp, as our flash needs to vanish before the comp ends, since he's, you know, leaving the frame. So just make sure you've got your comp set up like this before we begin. Now it doesn't matter when your actor leaves the shot, but you do need to set up the two clips this way for our effect to actually work. So our first step is to add our lightning. That way we can nail down exactly where we need to add all these effects we got to add on top of this to get our final result. So let's head over to the project window and grab the file marked JL Lightning and drop it into our comp. Let's also change the transfer mode to screen. We'll then position it on top on the timeline at a point where it marries up with the end of our actor clip. If we check out our example clip from Justice League, you'll see that about this point here is when our flash is gone from the frame. So how do we sync these clips up easier? Well, I'm gonna make it easier for all of you. In the download pack, you'll find the clip marked guide. If we drop this in on top of our lightning and sync it up, we can now scrub along the timeline and you can see we have some text prompts on screen that show you when your flash actor should be gone from the frame. Pretty easy, huh? So once you've synced up your lightning, it's time to adjust it. As you can see, the lightning is based on our Justice League example shot we showed before. And while I tried to replicate it as best I could, I just didn't have the space or a wide enough lens on my camera to get my legs in the shot. So let's now adjust both the position and the scale of our lightning to make the lightning fit my shot. And there we go. As I said, my legs are cut off, so unfortunately, that does mean some of my lightning is also cut off. Now, a good tip to get that lightning in the exact position you want is simple. Just start it in one place, and then scrub through the timeline and see how it fits onto your actor. If it doesn't fit, adjust it. You can also animate the position if you really want to. But personally, I'm happy with this position right here. Righto, that's done. Now, let's make that lightning pop a little more. To do this, it's an oldie but a goodie. I'm simply going to duplicate it, like so. Then I'm going to select that top layer, head to effect, blur and sharpen, and add fast box blur, and just increase that amount until you're happy. Hmm, I'm happy with that. From there, let's add some sparks, guys, because if you check the guide, it does say right here, add sparks. Now guys, I will preface this by saying once again that I got these sparks from the boys at Action VFX, but if you don't have access to these sparks, any sparks will work. You can basically just drag and drop these underneath the lightning layer and make sure they start on the same frame as the guide says. Now feel free to play with the position, scale them up or down, play with the opacity, anything you'd like to blend them into your shot better. If I skip ahead, you can see I've added a few spark layers like so, and this is what the end result looks like. Now, 
I'm just gonna highlight them all and pre-compose them and call it, I don't know, Sparks. There we go, and hit OK. This is just a little bit of housekeeping to make the comp a little bit tidier, and it's also gonna make this next thing easier. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with Lightning. I'm just gonna duplicate this, head up, add a blur to the top layer, and increase the amount to give our sparks a nice subtle glow. Now let's check out a preview. Not bad, but the actor just sort of disappearing looks weird and crap. Even worse if I add this sound effect. So let's fix that. Let's hit T to bring up opacity, head to this frame where the guide says add opacity keyframe, and then we'll hit the stopwatch. We'll scrub forward to where the guide says zero opacity, and then bump it down to zero. From there, we still need to convey that he's actually moved so fast that he's actually just vanished. That's made easier by adding a bit of directional blur. So let's head up, add a new adjustment layer, and make sure it's just on top of our footage by dragging it down. There we go. We'll then head up, grab the pen tool, and draw a rough mask around our actor, and then feather it out, say, 100 pixels. We'll then trim that adjustment layer just so it ends the same time as our actor footage ends. Done. Let's head back to that same frame where we started our opacity animation, and then we're gonna head up to effect, blur and sharpen, and add directional blur. We'll then adjust the angle to 90, hit the stopwatch on a mount, head to the second last frame, and bump it up so that it distorts the image a bit. And that should do it. If we check out a preview, it now looks like our flash blasts out of the frame in a blur suddenly. It's good, but it's not done yet. The next step is to add some warping to the footage around our lightning and our actor. For this, let's add a new adjustment layer and drop it on top of our actor and the clean plate. We'll then head up, grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask around where we want this warping to occur. We actually want to avoid the actor, so a shape that's kind of weird but it looks like this is what we're going for. And that looks pretty good to me. From there, let's hit F and feather it out around 50 pixels. Next, let's head along the guide till we find the words warp at full. Then we'll head up to effect, distort, and add ourselves a turbulent displace. Let's change the displacement to bulge and adjust the amount to suit our shot. I'm gonna set the size to around 85 and the amount to say 29. Done. Let's then hit the stopwatch on amount, head backwards a few frames till the guide says warp start and we'll turn the amount down to zero. Next step on the warp, is to head back to our Warp at Full marker, hit the stopwatch on Turbulence Offset, we'll then head to this point where the guide says Warp Zero, and move the offset target just over slightly. We'll then also turn that amount down to zero. This gives us that weird dimensional warping speed force effect. Right, see I said this was long. Our next step is to add a little RGB separation when our flash is at full power. So let's add a new adjustment layer, keeping it above everything, grab the pen tool and draw a mask around the area that we want affected by the speed force. Around here is pretty good. And then of course, hit F and feather it out around 100 pixels. I'm then gonna head to effect and presets and type RGB and grab simple RGB separation. Now guys, this is a Red Giant Universe plugin and it's not installed in After Effects by default. So if you don't have Universe, this won't be in your version of After Effects. But luckily, my good friend Ruben at Frickin' EFX has a tutorial on how to do a basic RGB split without any plugins that I've linked below in the description. Or you can just grab a demo of Universe and play along if you like. So let's scrub along the timeline until the guide says, Start RGB Split. It's here that we'll hit the stopwatch on a mount and then move forward a few frames and crank it up to say six. We'll then head along the point till the guide says RGB to zero and crank it back down again. If we check out a preview, you can now see we have this cool warping and color shift happening when the lightning starts up. Nice. Now the last big thing we need to add is some light bursts or flares. If we check out the example footage one more time, you can see that these random light bursts kind of come out of nowhere. It's weird, but hey, it's part of the effect, so we've got to do it. Luckily, I've taken the liberty of making these as it would have been a major pain. What are you looking at, SS? Yes, I added that reference. To build these because we're short on time as it is. So let's once again scrub along the timeline until we see flare one, grab that flare, and drop it in. We are also, of course, going to trim it so that it lasts only one frame. And there we are. 
We'll then change the transfer mode to screen. We can then follow it up with flare two and three and four and five. The end result should look like this. I know it goes fast, but it is essential. One last step is to add some color correction to the frames where the flares are on screen. For that, I'm gonna add one last adjustment layer. We're gonna then head up to effect and grab your color correction plugin of choice. I'm using Red Giant's Colorista, but you can use any plugin you like. As you can see, if I turn it on and off, all I've done is increase the exposure a little and added a little blue hue to the scene. From there, we're gonna hit T to bring up opacity, hit the stopwatch and crank it down to zero. We'll then scrub along the timeline until we find a flare, and this one right here. We're then gonna head back one frame, add another keyframe, and then we're gonna head forward one frame to the flare is on screen and crank that amount up to 100. We'll then skip ahead one more frame and bust it back down to zero. You can then rinse and repeat these steps for the other four flares. And if we check out a preview, that my friends is another Justice League effect done. Out of all those steps you can get something like this. So guys, that is my take on a basic Justice League flash effect. I know it takes a lot of steps to make what's essentially a pretty short shot, but in the end, you gotta admit, it's worth the effort. Now guys, I know I did say to some of you on Twitter that I'll be showing you how to make the lightning in this episode, but we've already gone pretty far over time and I don't wanna make the episode any longer, so I'm just gonna separate that into its own episode. But guys, that's all I've got for you today. If you did enjoy this video, please smash that like button and share the hell out of it. I really do appreciate it. And if you are new here, why not hit subscribe? And even if you are subscribed, please turn those notifications on so you don't miss a single film learning episode. By the way, other two Justice League episodes right here. Justice League title sequence and the other Justice League flash effect right here. My social media crap is above my head. Facebook, Twitter, I post all the time. But until next time comes around, keep learning.